in the name's rendering. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my going. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of God. Thank you, Ursus. You may be relieved of your post. My brothers and sisters, this is the Sunday after we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord. Allow me to ask you. Today, if somebody in here needs your presence, don't you fool yourself because they look good. They got a smile on their faces. They, it appears that they got everything working for them. <clears throat> but don't let that fool you because behind that smile, is an individual who's hurting inside. For our report that is before us today comes from a man who has had personal experiences with a pit. Our report today comes from a man who testifies of his own encounter being in a deep, low situation. A man who has experienced a horrible pit. But nevertheless, the good news to report is today, for those of you who are experiencing your pits. The report is that this man survived his pits. And not only did he survive his pits, but he lived long enough to give us his testimony. And I would today that every heart would look at somebody beside you. <clears throat> Come on, look at them. And, 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 and tell them today, I'm coming out of this pit. That's what I want to talk about today. I'm coming out of this pit. And if the army of Christ here and there are gathered, I would that you repeat our thought after us one more time. I'm coming out of this pit. Are y'all up in here today? Uh, somebody in here that's desperate enough, you're ready to get out of your pit, repeat, your, repeat that thought after me if you would. I'm coming out of this pit. Now give the Lord a hand praise for what he's about to do. Allow me to begin today by saying that it is a known fact that during the course of life, you and I will experience some things that the writer here refers to as pits. Now, I've already lived long enough to experience in various forms and in various fashions some of my own encounters with pits. Uh, there are many of you, like myself, gathered here today who have had, in a very personal way, your own experiences with some of the low places of life. Amen. Amen. Some of the painful experiences of life. And yes, some of you uh, here know all but too well Amen. 
about being in life's pits. Brothers and sisters, the record here informs us that this 40th number of song was written or composed, if you will, by David. Yeah, Jesse's boy. This 40th number of song is in fact a song of David. David wrote this song and he wrote it based upon his own experiences. Amen. And every now and then, brothers and sisters, we need to hear from somebody else who has had some personal experiences. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, I submit to you that you and I would do well to listen to David today. Amen. David who has experienced, amen, and has exposed himself to some painful, agonizing pits. And David writes uh, about his experience and by way of background, let me hasten to say that when David makes reference in the text to be in a pit, David is not talking about a literal pit. But rather David is talking about some other situation, some, some difficult circumstance, some tremendous distress. And David declares that it was so distressful. And it was so uh, difficult and so bad until David declared that it was a horrible pit. Mm -hmm. David was exposed to a horrible pit. And listen, there is much debate, brothers and sisters, in the theological realm concerning what this pit might have been. Some suggest that it might have referred to his encounters with an angry king that forced him to flee for his life, run and hide himself from the wrath of King Saul. Amen. Others suggest that it made reference to David's experience, amen, amen, when he had to run from his life, for his life from his own son Absalom, who, who endeavored or intended to rob his father David of the throne. And others suggest that it was some other situation that was painful and difficult. But whatever the case might have been to which David refers, one thing that we all know with absolute certainty that it was an experience that David never forgot. David would always remember and this experience. And brothers and sisters, David declares to us his experience is down in this low place, down in the depths of of a painful, agonizing situation that greatly disturbed and distressed him, that troubled him and had caused him tremendous agony. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 question for you today, brothers and sisters, and that is, what is your pit today? Yeah. Listen. I don't care who you are, we all have our pits. Whether we go verbal or whether we go public or not, everybody has in one fashion or another a low place. A painful, agonizing circumstance, a difficult situation. Now, brothers and sisters, I have gleaned by way of insight from David. David declares something about his pit. He was deeply, and, 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 and he was deeply in a situation. It was a situation that he was in the midst of a deep situation. And David found himself in that, that he could not get himself out of it. Listen, I've been there. Have, have you been there? Have you been in situations to where you've tried to get yourself out and look like nothing was happening to assist you to get out? Am I talking to somebody in here? Listen, listen, listen. It, I, I've been in some situations, brothers and sisters, that were so deep, so dismal, so distressing until I could not get out on my own. After all of my best efforts and 
we might get out ourselves. And, and, and let me tell you that eventually we all come to our time of circumstances that all of our education, all of our intellect cannot get us out of.